This is FFPÖ, your primary source for Austrian film and TV critique, where two minds come together to take apart the work of people who actually matter. Welcome back to a new episode of FFPÖ. My name is Paul and this is the 40. 54th, sorry, not 45th, 54th episode of FFPÖ, recorded on the 10th of September 2017, and we have a new fabulous co-host with us, it is... Daniel Ryan Spalding. Hi Daniel, thank Hi, you. Paul. Hi Paul. Hi. Thank you for being here, man. You're welcome, man. Yeah, yeah. This, this is this has been a really huge coincidence that you dropped in my lap, so to speak. That's not true, Paul. You asked me to do this a week. <laughs> it's not a coincidence. But you were you were on the fence. You you didn't know what to expect, mm, I right? I just didn't know if I had enough time. I didn't know yeah. how long I'd be in Vienna. Right, right. And but yeah, you graciously accepted my invitation. And Absolutely. Yes, with a lot of grace and, and spunk. Oh, stop. <laughs> well, you're very nice to be around, Paul. You're very, sh like, a, like a big, bright bottle of sunshine. Aw, thank yeah, you. So yes. smiley and so talkative. And <laughs> That's why I have a, a podcast. Such a lovable personality. Aw, Thank you for the. For, that's that's the first time a, a co-host was really nice to me. Oh, that's like, terrible. People were flooding me with me on the podcast before, but but they they never went that far in giving me an actual compliment. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah. Okay. You have amazing eye, by the way. Oh, stop it. Yeah. Amazing eye. Eyes. Eyes. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Do you have? <laughs> I think you're a cyclops. You only have one eye. <laughs> you have an amazing eye. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Yes. All right. So let's talk about the movie. Yes, and we watched Oberst Riedl, the 1985 Austrian, German, Hungarian co-production movie about mm -hmm. the infamous Oberst Riedl, Colonel Riedl. So was he a real person? Yes, he was. There, okay. A lot of the stuff was though like very loosely yeah, yeah. put together, but it, he was a real person. Mm. Yes. And so this was um, played by the amazing Klaus Maria Brandauer. Yeah. And so basically, he um, was a boy who came from like poverty. Yes. He was, from, was he from Galicia? Mm. No. 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 He. He. He, uh, Ruthenia, so Ukrainian, ah. Ah, but okay. with Hungarian blood. Like, he's, yes. he's the tip, prototypical example of an Austrian, basically. Just a mixture of a lot of different ethnicities mixed together. Oh, some God. Jewish in there. Don't some, let the right wing of this country hear you say that. Oh, like a shit ton of them are related, have relatives on, on, <laughs> on ethnicities that they hate on. Yeah, it's, exactly. it's, look, it's all about... All right. Hypocrisy. Stay focused. End. Yes. Stay focused. Stay Paul. focused. Let's move on. So in that, because he was, are, he was basically like this poor boy, like yes. the son of a peasant. Mm -hmm. uh, but, well, not a peasant. Well, he, like, you know, he was poor. His yes. family was poor. But he was going to school and he like was really had like a good good way with words and mm -hmm. wrote this really eloquent eloquent poem yeah. about like honoring the emperor. Yes. And so he got sent to like little soldier school. Yeah. <laughs> Cadet school. Cadet school. Yeah. I think we we're already inside of it, but um this segment is called Plots. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So he 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 gets sent to cadet school. Yeah, because he's just a bright student in general, yeah. and and yeah. somebody who has a lot of drive. And also in that first segment, mm -hmm. we see his love for the emperor being instilled by his mm -hmm. mom. Yes, who really yeah. like you always have to love the emperor. He's always yeah. right. This is well, and then his father dies, so then the emperor almost becomes like a father figure. To right. Him. Yeah. And also there are hints that he's being molested by. Uh, <laughs> His teachers. Yes. So he has sort of a fucked up perception of like male authority and right and wrong yeah, and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because he's there like what as an eight year old at cadet yeah. school or something like that. He's really young. Yeah. And, and then he gets he becomes friends with this rich uh, hung, like boy. Yeah. It's, Is he Hungarian? That it's kid? like it's like uh, Peter Parker meeting uh, Osborn for the first time and <sighs> seeing uh, uh, a big big fucking uh, mm -hmm. house with like 
what there were, in one scene there were like four servants to yeah. clean up one spill. So that child nowadays did, my Roomba is doing that. Okay, calm down, you're out of control. Your, <laughs> calm down with your Roomba. So his friend is uh, what's the guy's name again? Um, it was sorry, I, I his childhood friend. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, God damn it. God Coolini or something? Uh, Co- Cubini. Cubini. Cumbi- Cubini, yeah. And so... And his and his sister, Kataline Cubini. Yes, yeah, so yeah. they end up becoming, like, lifelong friends, basically. Yeah. So, um, so it ends up sort of jumping ahead to when he's a soldier. Like, so mm. we see him as a little boy, and then all of a sudden he's, like, 40. Yeah, yeah they jump, like, by yeah. 20 years at yeah. least. Yeah. Or 25 years. And, uh, and he's sort of risen his way up... In the, Through the ranks, yeah. In the army, and he's doing real good. And then uh, there's like this crazy thing that happens where one of the soldiers in his infantry, uh, in what is it, regiment? Yeah, in his regiment, uh, yep. has sort of become a bohemian and sort of oh, kind of yeah. crazy and has been writing articles like against the army. Yeah. And he, he was like one of the direct uh, people under. Riedel. He was mm-hmm. like his direct subordinate. Yeah. And that throws a bad light on him right. as well. And but they are like really big big buddies because before that we had a scene in a in a brothel. Well there's where yeah, they there's, hung out and had a good old time. Well, was that the guy that kissed him? No, no, that was that was the Who was the guy that kissed him? I think that was uh, actually Kubini. Oh, yeah. Okay, so basically, because the, that's that's one of okay, the gripes I have with. Paul, you gotta calm down. <laughs> You're out of control. So they were in this brothel, which was like the, a very classy brothel. Like Super the, the classy. The women were like totally covered, like yeah. like school marms and stuff. Uh, I think that was hot. That was en vogue back then, maybe. Oh, to be more it, to to leave it to your imagination. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, an ankle. Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> So I imagine um, what her knees like. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, I think he was like with this one prostitute. Well, Kubalini or whatever. I keep saying, <laughs> I'm going to call him Kubalini. Okay. <laughs> Kubalini was with one prostitute next door yeah. was um, Riedel. And he like was like talking to the prostitute like so how does how does Kubalini fuck you yeah like he was like literally like wishing he yeah. was the prostitute because mm. he's in love with Kubalini mm. yeah yeah he, he, he's in love with his friends so yeah. he like watched his friend have sex with the prostitute and basically like got off on that yeah and then yeah. he he uh but still, like, but he but, still he still banged the the the, the prostitute. Yeah, but uh, only be imagining that it was the guy. Definitely. Yeah, we have that several times in this movie. Yeah. like three or four times where he well, closes he can't his have eyes. Any, he can't have any emotional intimacy with the like with yeah. men. Yeah, because so, super illegal back then. Yeah, and so he has to sort of get all of his intimacy with the female characters, but he mm-hmm. never gets any real pleasure out of it. Yeah, no. Maybe some some kind of friendship. Yeah, it's more. They're more yeah. like confidants. Yeah, yeah. So then, what happens uh, is that so they confront the Bohemian guy who is, yeah. has committed in in subordination. Yeah, and uh, and he's actually very like trying to be very lenient on the guy, mm-hmm. but the guy just flips out and he's like, "Fuck this! I yeah. he, this." Emperor is an asshole, and he take he takes off all his clothes. Very dramatic, very yeah. dramatic, and he's like, "I hate st- st- getting up early in the morning." Yeah, fuck this! Like he yeah. says it twice. That and he then this hits the, the doctor. The uh, doctor challenges him to a duel, and he's no, like, no, not the doctor. No, there was a ri- originally. Remember? Oh, originally, it yeah. was the doctor, right? And then, and yes. then he was like, "I'm not fighting you. You're an old, stupid Jewish doctor." <laughs> and so then, Kubalini. Decides to like challenge him. He's like, uh, "Fuck you! I'm gonna challenge you." So they have a duel. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, the and Bohemian this... guy gets killed. Yeah, and we have a very, very uh, like a a glimpse into what what Riedel is sacrificing mm-hmm. because he he wants to save him. It's the second time that we see him bailing on his own ideals, basically, mm-hmm. and 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 and. Let well, it play out yeah. because the first time he was uh, like they at at the school where he was a kid, oh, he was yeah. once 
order to snitch on his right. on his friends and that's yeah, yeah. like a precursor basically yeah, yeah. like to to all the stuff that happens yeah, later yeah. on i think more and more he realizes that uh he ends up in situations that make him jaded and make him feel like yeah disillusioned yeah that there's no justice so he yeah. has to um sort of uh he has to if there's going to be no justice he might as well be the one that doesn't get fucked over yes yeah yeah, yeah totally he he's he's the 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 bright ideal man that is being destroyed by the system around him he could have just been a nice gay guy living in vienna <laughs> <laughs> having some fun in the bathhouse yeah exactly but no because no, of course because of yeah. patriarchy yeah <laughs> god damn man yeah so then what happens? Destroying even uh, fun They get men. sent to Galicia. Yes. To like... Um, clean up. Base, clean up the shit because all the yeah. like soldiers have been banging all the prostitutes and uh, like... And um, there was some and black was, market like, trading. Black market vodka trailing with, <laughs> uh, trading with the Russians. I was very amused by that. So he had to like lay down that. the law. Yeah. And uh, and then he there was this passionate speech of Redel where mm -hmm. he's just listing all the shit that his subordinates have done, and he's like, "You don't even know how to throw a hand grenade properly, so you that that one guy nearly got killed by by his own hand yeah. grenade. You are 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 whoring around. You are." In, doing business with yeah. Jewish people mm -hmm. illegally you and so and so on and so yeah. on I found that very very intense and he, it it showed the 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 his, his at this point still his yeah uh, his belief in the system yeah exactly yeah. and that he draws so much uh power from it mm -hmm. and like strengthens yeah. his his beliefs as yeah. well. It, yeah. I think that was one of the most powerful yeah, scenes yeah. in the whole movie. Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah. So then he does so well with that that he gets um, sort of promoted to meet the archduke. Or yes. To, to meet the or was it the emperor or the archduke? That was because he that got shot archduke. at the end, so it has to be the archduke. Yeah, yeah. Because the emperor. Um, never and got then shot. at the same time, I think uh, Kubelini ended up <laughs> like uh, I'm going to just keep calling him Kubelini. Yeah. He ended up like kind of saying some negative things about the empire and he got sent off to like work in Russia or in something. In St. Petersburg, yeah. yeah. And so, uh, but meanwhile, our man has kept like doing really well and he ends yeah, up... Yeah, he got promoted like he, yeah, all the time. Yeah, he gets up, he ends up like in charge of a spy network. Yeah, he's 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 building it like yeah. from the ground up. He's, mm -hmm. he's making this... Because spy networks weren't... Were, an incidence thing like you build up a mm. temporarily you build up during war or mm. something like that you build up a spine network mm -hmm. but this was preemptive yeah like before even there was a, a notion of war they yeah. were already okay let's spy on on our own offices yeah. see if they're clean or not yeah. and all that stuff and it it also see that you see that the corruption that this also brings by having somebody spy on your own people yeah because they get paranoid too even if they're good citizens or good soldiers you still get paranoid yeah so and while this is happening he's also having an affair with kubalini's sister uh-huh um well she's having yeah she's having an affair yeah because but, she's and he married. basically admits like yeah i love your brother <laughs> That was an intense I scene. I can't be with him. Yeah. She's like, well, do you love me the same or more? He's like, like no, I love him more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Because and he closes his eyes while they're kissing yeah, and, exactly. and, and, and having sex. Yeah. And then he ends up, uh, people think that he's gay, which he is. <laughs> and so he has to marry this poor Venetian girl with big blue eyes. Not Venetian. Venice. Sorry. Venetian Viennese. Is, is, yeah, yeah. Venice people. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Um, Viennese. But luckily, she's always sick. Yeah, yeah. So she never goes to any of the masquerades. <laughs> or like and then uh, and then they end up... Uh, like, he's going to all these balls and shit. And there's yeah. this one masquerade ball. And they're all wearing little Where masks. he looks like Zorro. Yeah. <laughs> and then he ends up meeting this cute, skinny gay guy. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and, and the gay guy and him have this cute little love affair where they're like uh-huh they're like playing piano together and they're having all this romance in the snow but then it turns out that he's a spy 
and he's been being spied on and uh yeah like a double cross yes and so they got him because initially they wanted him to find someone in the army to like uh, or adjacent corrupt. or adjacent to the army yeah like the, the weapons supplier yeah someone to like uh have a scandal so that people in the military like are, start getting paranoid and scared um, but then what ends up happening is we he, had a, he tries to bust someone, but it doesn't go well, it yeah. doesn't go down well. So he ends up being the person that they pin something on. Yeah. And the best thing is the Archduke, like at the beginning, gave him like the stipulation, just find corrupt people. Mm -hmm. Then he turns up with five cases of yeah. really corrupt people. Like he's doing honest yeah. work at this point. And the, 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 the Archduke is like, well, we can't use him because... He, we can't use somebody from we Hungary. Have, yeah. We can't use a Jew because we had a f an affair like a few years before that. We can't use, and he goes like something from Corinthia or something like that, Serbs and so, uh, yeah. Bohemia. Like he goes through all those people, and then he's like, oh yeah, there's one left. Like we have to get a Ukrainian, somebody like you, basically. Yeah. <laughs> so that I, was the funniest yeah. shit ever because it pulls well, the rug on under yeah. radel like yeah. immediately and makes him even more paranoid yeah because at that point he already is so deep into that spy stuff mm -hmm. that he suspect suspects everybody and everyone of mm -hmm. being just a traitor or potentially yeah. being a traitor or turning a traitor like he he gets more intense and more erratic at mm -hmm. that point he mm -hmm. it, it is it, Klaus Maria Brandau really makes this subtle curve work really well, mm -hmm. where you're like, oh, he's normal right now. And then he explodes immediately and gets mm -hmm. really angry. Yeah. Yeah. And are we going to say how it ends? Huh? Are we going to say how it no, ends? No, 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 okay. no, no, no. Okay. So no, because plot. I think this movie is intriguing enough. Okay. So to that's the be plot, watched. basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think that's the plot, more or less. Yeah. yeah. With some details left out here and there. But in totality, that is the yeah. whole thing. So I think we can go on to something more visual. Yeah. And let's go to cinematography. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, the whole movie had this really nice sort of glow to it. Kind oh, of yeah. Like a 1980s movie glow, but also just sort of like... Like from a MTV music video from that time with that... You like gotta, You got to stop interrupting me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your I'm guest. So, yes, you gotta, I'm, like, sorry. You I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Daniel. I'm sorry. Yeah, I know you're bursting with excitement right now. Yeah, it is. You gotta let me speak. <laughs> All right, please speak. Uh, for me, yeah, it had this sort of light to it. Like I was watching like the music video from Total Eclipse of the Heart. Oh wow, yeah, good. <laughs> but pull. then at the same time, it was like Austro-Hungarian fabulousness. Mm. So they're shooting in lots of palaces. And um, we get a little bit of the Croatian seaside or actually mm. Yugoslavian seaside at that right. point because it was in the 80s that it was shot. And um, we get like, yeah, like like lots of really beautiful um, visual moments. Like I loved a, a couple of them were like the shot when um, they were having the name day thing in the church. Oh, yeah. yeah and yeah, there's yeah. that beautiful shot of the cathedral with mm -hmm. the priest at the top. Yeah. And um, right before they had a duel, they had uh, um, when um, he was talking with Shorm, like the guy who went crazy. And they were like really they had really intimate body language. And it was all like the whole room was cast in a blue light. Oh, yeah. 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 Because but it I really, was early morning. Yeah. Yeah. And um, and then when they when he goes to Vienna and um, and sees uh, Katrina or whatever her name mm -hmm. was, and she's like all done up in furs and. They show the Viennese cafe and, and it's the like, popping blue eyes. Yeah. Well, no, the popping. She was more the the wife had more popping. Blue yes. Eyes. Yes. But they were they were both like top tier blue eyes. I don't know. I have pretty high standards. <laughs> <for blue eyes. laughs> yeah, I can't compete with my yeah. with my dark brown eyes. That's you have just... other things to compete with. <laughs> yeah. The, the cinema visually, sometimes it was really stunning. Like for example, the the ride through the through the park mm -hmm. uh, uh, during winter, and they pass the Kaiser mm -hmm. at one point. I, I thought that was really really beautiful and really well done. This contrast yeah. between the white of the snow, or the innocence of that, and the people I liked in the, the scene too when uh, they were like in the snow, like when they're having their gay romance thing, uh -huh. and they had that really freshly fallen snow, oh, yeah. just sort of like cast on them a little bit. And that looked like real snow, so yeah. they just had to wait yeah. to shoot it. Yeah. Or they were just lucky, like 
Oh, now it snowed yesterday. Come on, get people. Go, 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 go. Let's shoot yeah. this bitch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, 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 but I have to say, sometimes the cinematographer apparently didn't know how to light some of the scenes because sometimes it was really dark. Like you but couldn't, like, like, or, yeah. it, or is that just a poor copy? Well, no, maybe? you're right. Like they would have scenes where he'd be in a room surrounded by really dark, like mahogany wood and yeah. stuff. But I felt like that was him. Like it was almost in, like a metaphor of him falling into darkness. Right. Because it was his new job. Yeah. That, that in essentially pulled him down into that role of yeah. being a traitor or being traitorish. Yeah. Yeah. Well, being a spy. Yeah. Yeah. Most of all. So, okay, yeah, and, that's uh, it for me. For, what about, they, did you they, have any favorite cinematography they, moments? Well, they, 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 they did the whole, uh, uh, from his perspective shots. Yes, during, at the during beginning. It, at the beginning. And I found that very interesting yeah. that, they, that they chose that. Because I was, I was a little bit stumped when the first guy looked directly into the camera. I'm like, are you looking at me right now? Yeah. Is this just a mistake that made it into the first five seconds of yeah. this movie? Uh -huh. And then they showed a second one, and I'm like, oh, this is deliberate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then they switch. That, that's, that, that was a bit jarring, I thought, that they went no, from... No, I a, was fine with that. I don't know, man. Why, why would you do it in the first place? Just well, as a novelty they that, thing? They or? had that really long scene of him doing those exercises as yeah. a little kid. And so I think that sort of, like... The disorientation of that scene with all these little kids doing this exercise yeah. sort of like reset the structure of the visuals for me. So I was ready to go for it. Yeah. Anyway, oh, that's and, it for me. And and they did. Uh, uh, they had they had that uh, champagne foreshadowing twice in the movie. Oh God, that's only what you noticed. <laughs> no, because the first time it was in the brothel where she. The one, the one lady of the night just basically stuffed the whole uh, neck of the bottle down her throat. I don't know if you saw that one. But B but what are you trying to say? No, that's a deep throat metaphor, definitely. But there was no, like, there was none of that. Like, this wasn't like they a They didn't show porno. it. No, no, it, it was just foreshadowing, but with no resolve. Okay, that's irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> you think that wasn't deliberate? But what does it matter? Huh? It's what do you mean? Foreshadowing that he's gay? Or foreshadowing that they're going to have sex? Um, no, they, they didn't have sex. So well, then what it, is the champagne foreshadowing? Yeah, it's, 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 it's a penis. So it's the one thing that excites him uh, before he sleeps with a woman. Like, it brings him into that... All right, you're pulling at straws now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, in this case, we can, we can go to something sometimes more... Sometimes champagne is just some champagne. Yeah, sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. Right, he was smoking, like, a, a ton in this movie. Yeah. Like, he was a heavy smoker. That well, was... he was under a lot of pressure. Uh, that's true. Yeah, and people used to smoke a lot back then. Uh, actually, before the First World mm. War, most of the population didn't smoke. It really? Was, yeah, because th during the First World War, they started to issue cigarettes uh, for the trench warfare. Oh. So you're coping with the whole shell shock oh, thing God. and everything. So they just, And that's how they got a shit ton of men addicted to cigarettes. Right. It was like a brilliant marketing move, basically, mm. from, the, from, the, from the tobacco industry. Terrible. Yeah, 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 it's really bad. All right, so All right. now can we move on? Yes, okay. yes. Let's do something more for the ears than for the eyes. Ooh. And that's sounds. Yeah, there was lots of like beautiful classical music. Oh, amazing. Of, like, it starts out with it mm -hmm. during the intro. They have that piano scene. Yeah. They have that second piano scene where the, the, the teacher is harassing him. Well, he just puts his hand on him. <laughs> and then on his back. That's well, first on his back and then on his leg. Maybe he was just offering him support. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you're pulling at straws now. This was definitely <laughs> some... <I'm> teasing. <laughs> um, yeah. just, like, just like Catalina teased him at uh -huh. the beginning where she's like, they're sitting on a tree and mm -hmm. she's like, are you ticklish? And then she just counts down from 10 I don't remember while going that. up her, his leg. I don't remember that. And he had like this really weird smirk on his face. But this is not... Then, oh, they had a rendition of Wiener Blut, Viennese Blood. Okay. Amazing rendition. I love that. If you, if you Google Wiener Blut, you're, you're going to... Yeah. 
It's just wiener, like the wiener, and then blut, B-L-U-T. Yeah. Yeah. This is more your culture. I don't know about these, this kind of music. Yeah. But there was a shit ton of ADR, though. Like, a lot of people yeah. had, had some, re-recorded yeah. their, their stuff well, and they, laid it over. They used a lot of Hungarian actors. So maybe. I was wondering if maybe uh, their German wasn't good enough. That that's that's actually a brilliant theory. Yes, I like or, that. Or I don't know. Maybe they maybe they had some characters that were speaking in Hungarian and they dubbed over it. Yeah, we should we should watch Oberst Rittl in, in Hungarian. Yeah, like maybe there's a Hungarian version where a yeah. bunch of people were talking in Hungarian. Also, we had what four or five languages in the in the beginning when he was visiting when he was his, with the rich family. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was French, English, Hungarian, mm-hmm. German. Yeah, yeah. And maybe one more. But no, yeah, just, those four. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. Yeah. So Crazy. Nice. Yeah. That it, and I think the soundtrack is a real, real good example of how, how you use music throughout a movie. Yeah. Because the, they had that montage at the end, that war montage of the First World War, and just a waltz behind it. Yeah. <laughs> I found that uh, that was very... Uh, uh, like a satire on, 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 on the on the bombastic uh, well it's ultimately about feelings like of the a, mili- military yeah. and everything it's always it's about a breakdown in the power structure mm-hmm. you know it was yeah. like this one story about this man who like clung on to this idea of like you know uh, his righteousness con- his yeah. country and his his monarchy and his mm-hmm. emperor and then it all ends up his life ends up falling apart and right. the whole system falls apart. Yes. So, yeah. I think that, yeah, I like the music that they had at the end as yeah. well. I think it sort of summed everything up. Yeah. And yeah. a special bonus for me was the voice actor of the car from Night Rider was in this one. And it was... You you didn't didn't agree with that on, well, about just, my excitement at all. Yeah, you guys have a different relationship with David Hasselhoff uh-huh. than I do. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. I saw him this this year uh, at the at the Nova Rock Festival. Mm-hmm. It's like a ha- it's a rock and roll festival, but mm-hmm. they have one joke act, and the last two years it was it was uh, uh, David Hasselhoff. That's great. I, I watched I watched I watched the whole show. It was yeah. amazing. I Knight Rider was so old it wasn't even on in repeats when I was a child. Really? Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. 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 They 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 showed them till the two thousands. I know they did. And there are two spin off shows. I know. Yeah, and they were horse shit. Knight Rider was better. So Kit is in this one, basically. The voice, the, ger- the, the German, German voice, voice of Kit, Kit is in this there one. Yeah, go. yeah, and that was just amazing to me. So yeah. if you know Kit and you love Kit, just watch it for that, guys. Yeah. D- definitely. All right, let's move on to... Best Moments! Best Moment. Yeah, what was, what was, what was yours? My, bre- my favorite moment? Yeah. Um, I really liked... Um, I really liked how, well, in general, I liked how the film didn't, um, like it was sort of choppy and would yeah. jump back and jump back and jump ahead in time really fast mm. and it would be little slices of what was going on. Right. So you didn't, it didn't like spell out a narrative for you. Um, and so like there was one moment where like, uh, like they were, sent to Galicia and, and then bam all of a sudden they were there and yeah, they had their top hats like three seconds of establishing shots basically yeah, and yeah. These, <laughs> on these like so, these the, I don't know if they were Hungarian soldiers but or the soldiers Aust- yeah, yeah the regiment this, oh yeah the regiment was wearing like these gorgeous like blue and and red uniforms oh, with like capes they, and they were, they were all on their horses nice. yeah and it was just like it was just I love the transition of them just bam being like there <laughs> yeah that was so that that it didn't squabble its time. Yeah, exactly. By by, by fucking around, it went right for the important mm-hmm. slices of his life. Basically, mm-hmm. it is a slice of life movie, or mm-hmm. slices of life in this case. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, for me, for me, it was the, the 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 last love scene that he has, that like they gave back this liver of hope. Mm. I really like that. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I like the hair. Because had a nice little romance there. Because it was so sweet and innocent, and and when they played piano together, mm-hmm. you saw again like a glimpse of of him being a normal human being, and mm-hmm. what would it, what would he be if he grew up nowadays? Mm-hmm. Like basically, like mm-hmm. just enjoying the company of a nice young man and having a good time, yeah. and 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 just being happy and content with himself yeah, yeah. and that was just it made the rest of it so much more heartbreaking because it re because they the the, the movie pulled humanity away from him like mm-hmm. chunk by chunk and then they reinstituted that mm-hmm. at the end mm-hmm. just to pull it away again from the viewer and i thought that was first of all brilliant from mm-hmm. from a narrative standpoint yeah. i think it makes it way more interesting mm-hmm. Instead of making him more and more evil and evil and evil and evil and evil, mm-hmm. but in, in reality he's he's also uh, uh, a, a kind of a kind of a tragic hero. Yeah, that tries to do the best that he can, and and mm, yes and no, he's yeah. kind of also an asshole too, though. Yeah, sometimes, yeah. but he's an <laughs> he's an honest asshole with the people that he loves. Yeah. Like yeah. he he tells he tells uh, uh, Kubini uh, the the. the the daughter Kubini, like, if you ever try to, to cross me, I'm gonna shoot you. <laughs> like, that's honesty. That's honesty. Uh, it's just Austrians, man. Yeah, and he, he, he tells her that he loves his brother, her brother more than him, yeah. her, her, so. Yeah. All right. And what is, <laughs> so now we have a secret category? Oh, yeah, we have a secret category, all right. Mm-hmm. And it is... <clears throat> Austria, Hungary's next top trader. Drum roll. <laughs> no, so it's like it's like America's next top model, but instead, uh, in, instead we gonna judge which is the best the next top trader because there were a bunch of traders in this movie mm-hmm. like we had a, like Riddle went on a on a trader spree of of sorts oh who was who who yeah who you thought who you thought was the best character or who popped out for you from the tra- trader oh, pr- trader think. part um i think uh i think that gay lover yeah at for the me, end that was the worst okay yeah because he um like, I don't like people that, like, because clearly this man, like, was desperate for, like, male intimacy and, mm-hmm. like, expressing his sexuality and, like, to get in there and to, like, manipulate him and to seduce him to just to get information. Yeah. I just thought it was so um, tasteless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because he, he, he was just doing it for money. You're not doing it for any like, like higher goal. Exactly. Or like moral. Like at the very least, Riedel like was Riedel was prepared to like destroy people's lives, but he was doing it <laughs> like at the very least with because he thought this, he was right. Well, because he time. wanted to maintain the power structure of his culture and be a part of right. something bigger. Yeah. Whereas this gay guy, this like fucking spy, he yeah. was just like 12,000 marks. Yeah. He was just doing it for money and thought, Oh, well I'll, I'll just, you know, mm. or Conan, seduce this know. guy and take advantage of his weaknesses yeah. and his vulnerability and then betray him. Mm. That, yeah. Good, yeah. Good morning. Yeah. Good, good trader. Yeah. Good trader. I, I like your choice. Yeah. Judge. Judge Spaulding. And he wasn't even that cute either. <laughs> he was too skinny. He, he had a bit of a... He was too lanky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, a little bit of a beanstalk. And he was just like, I want you to help me. I've always been weak. Yeah, and he's, you know, and like, he's like, throwing in... And, he's, and that was like date one or two. I don't remember. Maybe, maybe and he, he throws in the love thing mm-hmm. at that point already. I want you to know that. I want to yeah. know if you love me. Yeah. Like, Shut up, traitor. <laughs> yeah. yeah, while the TMC camera is yeah, rolling in the, the background. There was this camera... <laughs> There was like this video camera. I'm like, they didn't have video cameras in. Well, they 19, had, the, but no in audio. 1910? Yeah, yeah. They had that? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, so yeah. it was like this fucked up Charlie Chaplin movie? Yes, yes. No audio, this? no audio. Oh, just gosh. just somebody recording. I don't know about that. And also, uh, like, filming in the woods 
with that bad lighting, everything like you wouldn't see faces or anything, no, of course. except if you're like really. How in- did they not notice that guy was there? Exactly, I hated that. that was so. I hated that. that was so silly. <laughs> Okay. Anyway, what about you? Who is your favorite? Your favorite. Uh, my, my favorite trader has to be um, <sighs> Kubini is a bit too obvious, I think. So Shom, I think, from the beginning, was this is kind the of Bohemian soldier, the Bohemian soldier, because he was first of all he was intense. He had he had. Uh, a lot of spunk. Mm-hmm. He 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 knew that he was fighting for something. Oh, but so righteous. you're saying that you liked him. You liked his actions. See, I'm as saying, a trader, as a trader, oh, I liked. See, I'm his... saying I didn't like this guy's act. He was my oh. least favorite trader. Oh, okay. He Your least one, favorite. Well, trader. he was the worst trader in it okay. for me. Okay. Let me put it that way. Uh-huh. Yeah, the morally most deplorable. Yes. Uh, trader. All mm-hmm. right. Yeah, but for me it was so best trader okay. would be would be Sean because he actually did something that was not guided by some that, some higher that... some higher monarch power like the Russians mm-hmm. or anybody mm-hmm. else. He just saw something wrong yeah. and wrote about it under a pseudonym um, in the newspaper. And we actually never found out if he actually did that. He probably did. Well, yeah, he wouldn't have had that reaction if he hadn't done it. Yeah. Yeah, and okay. and 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 he he goes out well, with a bang. Yeah, with a. <laughs> All right, so he, he, he makes a killing with his autobiography. Oh, stop it! <laughs> so now it's him gonna murder in the charts. What is it? Is it final thoughts now? Um, or what is? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, or do you have a top trader? Like it's now you chose a bottom trader. <laughs> no, I don't. I but 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 then if like. But I don't understand what you're saying. Like, yeah. like if he's, but he then he's not a traitor because he's not betraying him. his ideals. Yeah. but he's betraying the one that he's sworn to as a soldier. Okay. Well, but that's. Uh, but you think that that's good? You you want me to choose a traitor that I think is a positive traitor? Yeah. Po- <laughs> no, I don't. If you're a traitor, you're a traitor. You're not a positive traitor. <laughs> See, this is the difference between Austrian mentality versus other normal people. Other like, normal I want to know who the best trader was. And I'm like, yeah, this guy, he was horrible. He was the, he was the worst trader. Oh, no, no, no. I want to choose the one that I love. Yeah. Tra- he was a somebody, trader. somebody that like, I can look up to. Yeah, exactly. You're a sociopath. I'm going to have to check your basement to see if there are any little children down there. Not right now. Austrians, <laughs> you nuts. I have a I have a basement time shelf with a few friends. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, yeah. So let's go on to the final conclusion. Final conclusions. Yeah. So, did you like the movie? Would you recommend it? Yes, but um, you have to like caveats. You know, you have to know that it's two hours long and mm-hmm. like be ready for it. Yeah. Just sort of be like, okay, I'm going to watch this sort of historical movie. And you can't miss like 10 minutes or something because all that stuff that's yeah, you said focus. Com- is coming back later. Yeah, because yeah, it's not a movie that spells out the narrative like you. clearly. Yeah. You have to like kind of be like, oh, okay, what's happening? Who are these people? What's going on? Like yeah. you have to really like focus but mm. i would definitely recommend it i was wondering if it had gotten an academy award nomination for best foreign film or something for that year it was uh, really good yeah i'm, I'm gonna look uh, look up the imdb thing for the awards quickly okay. because that movie yeah it did it did do uh, it it's just really well made it, it mm. nothing like the cinematography example it, it would have been great to shoot mm-hmm. on like a 60 millimeter imax or something like that that would have made the visuals i think pop even more mm-hmm. but they i think they just worked with what they got because they weren't like because that that wasn't an american production they didn't have they didn't have hollywood money laying around well to, they had to a film lot of epic. money though like they had like Tons and tons of actors and sweeping shots. And well, yeah, but they, they were had filming it, but to all they these were, palaces and stuff. Those are relatively cheap to shoot in, especially if you're thinking of pre, pre, well, still Cold War Hungary and and stuff like that. Oh yeah, this that was, was really cheap to mm-hmm. shoot there, and extras were like. 
basically free compared to, to Western film productions. That's like why a, a shit ton of Italian Westerns were actually shot in Hungary. Because it was so much cheaper and the, 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 there are parts of Hungary that just look like the Wild West, basically. So they had like a ton of Italian Westerns were made in Hungary. Oh, it won um, a jury prize at the Cannes Film Festival that year. That makes sense, yeah. It won some. Oh, it won. Yeah, it got a. It did get an Academy Award nomination for Best Foreign Language Film. Ah, right and on. a Golden Globe nomination. Rated R. And of ba- it won the BAFTA Award for Best Foreign Film. Sweet. Jesus. It won. Uh, oh, it won the Palme d'Or at the Cannes Film Festival. Damn. Jeez Louise! And it won some German, the German Film Film Award. Yeah. So yeah, very very well done. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised it didn't win the Academy Award that year. Yeah. For uh, best uh, foreign got film. Got them. Got them Academy. Always stiffing the Austrians. I want to see who they who who they beat. Arnie never got an Oscar. Who? Annie? What? Arnie. Arnie. What's Arnie? Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, oh, come on! For he? what? Twins. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> you gonna do your Arnold Schwarzenegger? No, I'm not gonna do my Arnie. I'm reserving that for my other co-host who is also doing an Arnie, so we can have an Arnie off. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So you know, um, so Argentina had a movie called The Official Story, and that's what won the Oscar. Uh, but this isn't this isn't put in as Argentina. A, Conal Riddle is put in as a Hungarian film. It says Hungary Bullshit. instead of Austria. Bullshit. <laughs> no, um, it makes sense because a shit ton of stuff was shot there. Yeah. A lot of the actors are Hungarian, but yeah. it's still a co-production. I, I wouldn't call it an Austrian movie either. Yeah. I would call it a co-produced movie because it's between all those countries. Yeah. But yeah. Um, final thoughts for you? Yes, final thoughts for me. I, I think this is a, a, a movie worth checking out. Klaus Maria Brandau is amazing as Oberst Redl. Uh, the supporting cast is also very well, uh, very well picked. Like there, 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 there are no total duds in there. And I even uh, had like a, 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 an almost convincing relationship with with the with the child actors. Like they oh, didn't yeah. stink either. They no, didn't they stink. did a great job. Yeah, yeah. And and it's so easy to have shitty, shitty child actors. They did a great job with yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, that was that was really well done. And the progression and everything, it's it's very well paced out, even though I think it is a bit too long. Like, you could probably shave off, like, 10 or 15 I'm minutes. I'm fine with it. But it, it, it all makes sense at the end. It yeah, all culminates in a, in a common goal that makes And there was it, no, like, uh, like, annoying times where it was, like, a montage or something. Like, it, everything had a purpose, I think. Right, yes. Yeah. Well, there was one montage, very briefly, where he builds his spy network. Oh, but that, no, well, that yeah, that was like ten seconds. But I mean, like in nineteen eighties. Oh no, no, <laughs> like they're like out exercising of no, out in the of park nowhere. or something. Yeah, it's A team style, and yeah. he starts to solder together a new yeah. gun or something. Yeah, here's my new powerful schnitzel launcher. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, it it fires military grade schnitzel rounds that can feed a whole army. Yeah. That's that's that that that's that's not what what's missing with this movie. It is a it is a very well rounded movie. Uh, the subtitles were really well done mm-hmm. for the most part. Like they you understood everything and they like they didn't mistranslate anything. Well, one time there was a couple times where they spelled the word no like instead of K N O W they yeah. just put N O. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah but in gen- giving the the, the Austrians enthusiasm for yeah. English subtitles these yeah. are brilliant subtitles right. yeah um, yes so uh, we are at the end of the show okay. plugs what where can people find you where mm. can where can people check you out just Daniel Ryan Spalding I'm usually <laughs> just Facebook YouTube and, and uh-huh. Instagram links in the description below sure all right yeah i'm gonna put you in there you just put my website i'm gonna put put in all the links stop it (laughs) let's see how many fit in the description oh you're terrible (laughs) um yeah you you, you're really funny man uh guys check his stuff out it is really worth worth your your time um he has a youtube uh page with a, a few clips on there and everything 
A few clips, please. It's an understatement. How it's dare an understatement. It's, it's an understatement. It's a catalog. It's an it's it's a it's a swath <laughs> of swath of videos. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Um, thank you for being here, man. No problem. It was it, no problem. <laughs> So sassy. <laughs> so sassy. Okay. Um, thank you for being here. And thank you for, for listening in and watching, guys. Uh, see you the next time. <laughs> Bye. Bye. I still don't have a call uh, sign off. It's all right. Bye yeah. is fine. Hmm? Bye is fine. Yeah. Yeah, all right. I'm going to leave this in. No, you won't. I won't. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> okay.